go to Alex in Portland, Oregon. What's up, Alex? Hi, John. How are you? I'm outstanding. How about you? Not too bad. <laughs> Not too bad. The uh, <laughs> undersell of the year. What's right. up? Yeah, I, I, I got an interesting question. Nobody um, calls my show because um, when things uh, aren't too bad, nobody does. Right, yeah, yeah. We so, just want to say hi. What, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just going to say what's up. What's up, Alex? How's it going? Um, so my dad recently, just a couple weeks back, had a heart attack and he almost died. Okay. Um, and I feel guilty for not feeling bad about it. Um. I'll get to the meat of everything you want to know. My main question is, um, is this normal? And if it's not, what do I do about it? If it is, how do I deal with the guilt of not feeling bad? So when you say you didn't feel bad, what does that mean? Tell me about that. Um, I just, I don't feel the sadness that I would expect to. Like my parents have been married for 48 years. Um, the thought of losing my mom makes me sick to my stomach. Okay. My dad, almost indifferent. And I didn't have a, I don't, I didn't have a great relationship with him, but he was never a bad dad. Yeah. I just, I didn't have that connection. Okay. So what, paint me a picture in like a sentence or two. What did mm -hmm. you expect yourself to do or to feel or to experience in the hypothetical event your dad almost dies? Um, I guess I thought I would have this like overwhelming sense of grief. Like I lost something that, you know, meant so incredibly much to me. Mm -hmm. Um, and like, just like I would with my mom and that would just break my heart. But yet with him, I just, I don't know, like I felt sadness, but it, the sadness was for my mom for almost losing him, yeah. you know? So it just, I don't know. It just, it hit me weird. And like, I, I realized when she called me and told me that, she, you know, I could hear it in her voice. She was just distraught. Sure. That's what hurt me. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, once I, like, started thinking about it, I realized that's what my sadness was. It was for her. Mm -hmm. And, I don't know, I've seen him since, and, you know, he's doing fine. He's He had really high cholesterol, and one of his arteries was almost completely blocked. Mm -hmm. And he's being incredibly stubborn and he's saying, well, it took 67 years for that artery to block. So now I have another 67 <laughs> years. He's just being like so cavalier about it. And when he was in the hospital, um, he wanted no attention. Like he didn't want anyone to know. And it was, you know, oh, don't, don't tell anybody. And now that he's out, he loves all the attention he's getting. And he wants to talk about every little detail. And it's just, it's a lot for me. I'm like, I just, I can't, you know. Here's my guess. Here's my guess, Alex. <laughs> this isn't just about the heart attack. He's been mm -hmm. this way for your whole life. Is that fair? Yeah. Yeah. And it's exhausting and annoying. And it is okay. <laughs> for whatever it's worth, and it, I'll tell you, it's not very much. It is okay to not like your dad. Okay. You can love somebody and not like them. That's you can fine. love somebody and respect them and not want to hang out with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Here's a couple of things I've learned working in grief for forever now um, and trauma and tragedy. We have these Hollywood pictures of what happens. This even we've, There's even a lot of research on juries. And when people respond, they find their husband has passed away or their kid has passed away and they don't respond in a Hollywoodized way. They're often looked at as a mm -hmm. suspect mm -hmm. or why did you call this person? That, what I will tell you is that whatever picture you have of you, how you think you're going to respond, you have no idea. None. Right. Most people, most of the time don't scream and yell and weep and fall down on the floor. They go stone numb. They freeze. Yeah. And they will report things like, I can't feel anything. I can't, I am just, and that's just their body shutting down. And mm -hmm. that's totally normal and okay. What, here's, here's what I want to, to leave, give, give you to, to, to carry you on in the next however many years. You're going to have your dad with you, your mom with you, and just as you learn to learn about Alex more. Mm -hmm. Be curious with your responses. Not judgmental of them. Okay. 
So when you have an anticipated response and you're, you don't respond that way, instead of going, oh my gosh, I'm broken or I suck or it's because my dad's, <laughs> just be curious about it. Like, why in the world? Mm-hmm. It yeah. helps me to write that stuff down when I have those different responses. Um, mm-hmm. Some people can talk it out with their friends or with someone they trust, but just be curious about it. So let's be curious. Why do you think, why do you think that you were indifferent? And it's okay to say, I don't like him. I have never liked him. Yeah. He hurt me growing up. Um, I think, I think it's because I've seen, well, for an example, um, probably about two months ago, um, my mom had COVID and shingles at the same time. And Yikes. she was almost literally on her deathbed. There was one day though that she thought, yeah, I'm, I'm done. This is it. And she, I don't, I am married. I don't live at home. And, uh, I knew they were going through this and I knew she was also a little stubborn and didn't want to go to the hospital. So I had texted my dad and I said, Hey, you know, if she's refusing to go to the hospital and you won't fuck up and take her, I'm going to call the police and I'm going to have a force welfare check on her because I don't want her to die because she's being stubborn. Right. And he just said, okay, thanks for your concern. You know, well, she's doing okay. Blah, 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 blah. And I then find out when she asked him to call for an ambulance for her on that day that she thought this was it. He said, Oh, are you sure? I mean, you know, they're, they're going to show up and you're going to be really embarrassed. And, you know, like he just, he kind of, he cares so much about appearances, Mm -hmm. not the the severity of the situation. And then on top of that, I find out that when I said that to him, that I'm going to call the police and have a force check on her, he laughed. He thought that was funny. Hmm. And I'm just like, who does that? You know, I just, it it makes me sick because it's like you, you don't take things seriously. And then you want all the attention and love in the world when it's about you. Yeah. So it just, I just, I'm disgusted, really. And so here's what I want to tell you, Alex. It's okay to be disgusted. Yeah. Anger points us to things that we care about. Yeah. And And that's what it is. It was, it was anger and, you know, all that for how he treated, treated my mom in that situation, how I've seen him treat her, you know, my whole life growing up. And, 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 and how he treated you. Yeah. How he treated you. You you were the recipient of this as well. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to be frustrated. In a perfect world, you let him know these things while he's still alive. I've also seen it time and time again that people pass away and that initial wave of anger and disgust and frustration and all that passes. And then there's this longing for almost for a myth, for a fantasy of, I miss my dad. Right, I miss my dad, and letting him know, hey, I almost we almost lost you, and you're cavalier about it. Here's somebody who's not cavalier about you, me, and I love you, and I don't like your cavalier attitude. It breaks my heart that you're cavalier about mom's health, about your health, but your dad, you're sixty, seventy years old. You can do whatever you want. I'll tell you, it breaks my heart, and it's hard to love you. I do. It's hard to love you, though. And then when it comes back to the response, your response does I mean, you don't need to be curious about it. <laughs> you know why. You don't like the man. He almost killed your mom in your, in your heart and mind. He almost killed your mom. He's been like this his whole life. You're just done with him. It's cool. You're allowed to be done with him. And I'm going to tell you down the road, this is going to come back. And it's going to hurt. And so whatever you can process and deal with now and let go of. Here's something I think... Um, that you're carrying around that would probably be great for your soul. And and you should forgive your dad and put that brick down stop carrying it. I think you've been carrying your old man for a long, long, long time. And he obviously doesn't have the tools and some equipment and he's got some challenges that he's worked through and he's not going to change. And so at the end of the day, you're carrying around the stuff that's not going to make any difference to him. So I'd set it down. And you can set it down by writing him that letter, by calling him and looking him in the eye, by saying what you need to say or saying nothing and just saying, I'm putting that down. I love my dad and he's drawn his boundaries and so I'm going to draw mine. But that's hard, man. That's hard, 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 hard. 
In the last year, last two years, I've heard more stories of people coming to the terms with their parents and who they are and their mortality or their idiocracy or whatever it happens to be. And whew, I'm sorry. But to answer your original question, you're not broken, Alex. You're not evil. You're not mean. It's okay to not like your dad, especially if he's abusive, especially if he was ugly to your mom, especially fill in the blank. I always want people to be respectful and treat their parents with dignity. And it's always okay to just sit down and say, I miss my dad. Where were you? That's okay too. Thank you so much for that call, Alex.